Hello and all, it's my review of My Hero Academia Vigilantes Chapter 90 United Front. And you know, last chapter, I was so excited, you know, oh, it's rapper Mirko O'Clock teaming up against this big bad villain, this could be so cool. I, I kind of forgot that, you know, they were in the middle of an underground fighting arena full of angry, violent, super-powered fighters who were in the process of being drugged to make them more angry, more violent, and more, well, you know, super. So yeah, they also still have to deal with that, on top of the villain. <sighs> completely slipped my mind, that completely slipped my mind. Thankfully though, O'Clock manages to steal some gas masks, which I'm just kind of wondering... Why? Like, why does the staff have gas masks? Couldn't there have been like a little bell that tells them, Oh, we gotta get out of here before they start gassing people. Clearly, they were aware this was happening. And they were just, you know, cool with staying in the middle of all this chaos and madness as everyone around them, you know, goes crazy, violent, and just starts attacking everything they see. I mean, I can understand if they weren't told this is going to happen and they weren't given gas masks. But they were given gas masks and yet were somehow cool staying in the middle of all this. How much are they being paid? I mean, seriously. Oh, no, Clock also managed to get a gun, which, you know, of course, Rap has a problem with. Real men go empty-handed, which, fair point, I'm not a big fan of guns myself. I would much rather we replace all the world's guns with swords. I think it'd make for a much more entertaining world. Anyway, then O'Clock explains his plan is basically just to have Mirko and Rappa be uh, essentially live bait. To go off in all that chaos and madness and anarchy and just, uh, you know, see what the enemy does, see how they react, which... Any sane person would respond with, God, no, are you out of your freaking god dang mind? But thankfully, we've established time and time again that these two are very, very far from sane. And uh, when they're told they can beat up everyone around them as long as they go easy, oh, they are happy. They are very, very happy. Though it definitely does not seem like they are going easy in any stretch of the imagination. Anyway, then O'Clock uses the gun to take out the security cameras, which makes All for One seem perturbed. Not angry, not annoyed, just slightly irritated, which so utterly, utterly terrifying. As he says, oh, we've been blinded, and you know, they might actually escape. And then we see Korrigiri! Yay! I actually didn't think we'd see him. I didn't think he'd been created yet. I was assuming that All for One was using the teleportation quirk, or at least an earlier version of it, to steal the quirks. But no, Korrigiri is here, and that did actually make me want to dive into the timeline a little bit. Now, my math is not great, I will admit that first and foremost. But from what I've seen online, this flashback seems to be happening about 10 years ago, and the previous flashback, the Aizawa flashback, happened four years before that. Which does actually make a lot of sense if you think about it. It was said in the main series that Korrigiri exists solely for the sake of serving Shigaraki. And if my math is correct, it's a big if right there, then Oboro Shirokumo, the man who would one day become Korgiri, died 14 years before the start of the main series, when Shigaraki would have been about six. So that would have been right around the time when All for One took him in. It's quite possible that his corpse was stolen with the explicit purpose of creating a protector, a guardian for Shigaraki. I mean, you know, I'm thinking about it. a hero student is probably the best bodyguard you can ask for. Their entire purpose, their entire being is to protect someone, and that can be easily manipulated into thinking, okay, no, you're not supposed to protect the world, you're supposed to protect this one kid right here, that's your job. Alrighty then! I'm also kind of curious where Shigaraki is right now, because... Let's say this is 10 years before the start of the main series, Shigaraki's about 10. What is he doing? What is his life like between the point where All for One takes him in, and he attacks you away? Because he's been shown time and time again, not to be a patient man. So how did All for One convince him, you know, not to start attacking Hero Society and not start murdering heroes before he entered his 20s? I'm very curious about that. He made a lot of video game references when we first saw him, so maybe he's just playing video games 24-7. Maybe before his flashback ends, Korgiri is going to go check on Shigaraki and we're going to see him, you know, uh, playing video games or something like that. That'd be actually pretty funny. It also is definitely confirming my suspicion that Korrigiri is going to appear again in the main series very soon. I, at least that's what I think they're hinting at here, maybe. And, you know, while I'm ranting about the timeline, there's something else I want to mention. This is all happening roughly 10 years before the start of the main series. All for One still has his face. He's still going to have his face for another five years. And yet in the one flashback, we clearly saw that when O'Clock had his quirk stolen, All for One did not have a face. Meaning he's going to keep fighting against All for One for the next five years. 
He's gonna keep investigating this underground drug smuggling ring for the next five years before he finally comes face to face with the big bad. I have so many questions about that. I mean, is he sharing that information with other heroes? Does All Might know about this? Does All Might know that uh, All For One is creating, you know, essentially super soldiers here? Because he seemed fairly surprised to find out the Nomus had been created by All For One. I'm, I'm very curious about that. Anyway, then we meet the big villain, and surprise, surprise, it's Hood. The high-end Nomu that Endeavor fought fairly recently in the anime, actually. So, interesting? I had a whole lot of theories, but that was definitely not one of them. And this does actually make a lot of sense. In chapter 264-264 of the main series, it was said that Hood was actually originally built off of the body of someone who fought in underground fighting rings. You know, like the underground fighting ring they're currently in. So this is essentially where All For One recruited him. I don't know, I just find it really interesting. You know, that was the chapter where Aizawa found out that Korgiri was uh, Oboro Shirakumo. Essentially the first crossover between these two series. And it was foreshadowing what apparently is the second crossover between the two series. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. Anyway, it's definitely interesting that Hood is way more human now than the creature he'll eventually end up becoming. Maybe that's because, you know, they had to make him more and more monstrous to allow him to withstand multiple quirks. Maybe right now he just has the, you know, regeneration and weird arm movement here. Because as Rapper goes in and take him out, he counters, well, first off by dodging all of his moves, which is very impressive right there. And then by pulling a Monkey D. Luffy, wrapping his arm around Rapper's fist and sending him flying. <laughs> oh, I love that. But what I loved even more was the fact that when Mirko goes in to avenge him, she said, What'd you do to my pal there? <laughs> oh my god, she and Rappa are friends now. That makes me so, so, so badly want to see them reunite in the main series. Please let it happen. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Anyway, then he managed to knock her out with a kick, which again, he knocked out Rappa, the man famous for his punches with a punch, and Mirko, the girl famous for kicks with a kick. Oh, that was hilarious. That was absolutely hilarious. And he sent them flying in the exact same spot so that Mirko landed on top of Rappa. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. That was absolutely hilarious. Thankfully, though, O'Clock comes in and saves the day. Yay! Though it seems like Hood has some regeneration. But, but the most interesting thing here is, O'Clock says, Thought so. This thing can heal. Why would O'Clock think that? Could it mean that Spite would be led to believe this is in fact not his first encounter with All For One with the Nomu, and that he has met beings like this in the past? He's already well aware of these hybrid human monster creations that are go working in the underground, that he already knows they exist, and he's been fighting against them up to this point? Because Hood recognizes him. He says, you are O'Clock. So is it possible that O'Clock is already an enemy of All For One? Someone who's fought against him, or at least someone who's fought against his soldiers in the past? I'm not sure about that. That's at least how I'm interpreting that line, but I might be wrong about that. But very, very strange. Overall, it's just a very strange chapter, and I absolutely freaking loved it. <laughs> Mirko and Rappa got their butts kicked so badly, it was hilarious. Also, worrisome the fact that both their gas masks got knocked off them. Is that going to be an issue? I mean, they are on the ground where the gas is, you know more heavy. Are they going to start breathing it in and then, you know, lose control of their quirks? Is it going to be the case that O'Clock has to fight against them as they rage out of control while also fighting Hood? Or are they going to, you know, get drugged up and they're going to have to, you know, fight to stay in control, fight to stay in control of their minds as they're, you know, just going insane so they can continue to, you know, give O'Clock some backup? Both would be very interesting to say, quite frankly. Though it's a little unclear if this gas they're breathing in is permanent. I mean, the quirk enhancers we've seen so far seem mostly to just be temporary. You know, just a little boost that lasts a couple hours, then when it's out of their system, they go back to being normal. So, if that's the case here, it would make a lot of sense if, you know, they breathe in the gas and go out of control. Uh, O'Clock might end up breathing it in as well, because he said with the gas mask on, he could only go for short bursts and hits. He can't get enough oxygen to his brain to go, you know, all out, like he usually does. So, will they have to take out the mask and, like, take in a deep breath of gas if he wants to take out Hood? I mean, we know he's not going to kill Hood because he comes back later on, so very, very curious about all of that. But please, let me get all this down below. What do you think of this whole chapter? Do you think that O'Clock has battled the Nomu before? It definitely seems interesting that no one recognized them. No one had really seemed to know what they were 
when they appear in the main series. I'm just very curious about all of that. And and when do you think Rappa and Korgiri are going to appear again in the main series? I'm very, very excited for that. Uh, but yeah, let me follow down below. Be sure to like and subscribe to the next video. Until then, peace!